Hello again. My name is Dr. Halim Jafar. Today I'll talk about trauma from occlusion. Please subscribe to my channel, HL Talent. Let's start from the introduction. We know that the periodontium attempt to accommodate to the forces that exist on the crown. And this adaptive capacity varies in different person and in the same person at different times. So when occlusal forces exceed the adaptive capacity of the tissue, the tissue injury will result. And the resultant injury we name it as trauma from occlusion. Trauma from occlusion, we should know that it refers to the tissue injury, not the occlusion forces. The effect of occlusion force on periodontium is influenced by the magnitude and the mass of the force that exists on the periodontium and the direction of the force and the frequency and duration. In the magnitude, increasing the magnitude, the periodontiums respond by widening of the periodontal ligament space and increasing in the number of periodontal ligament and thickening of periodontal ligament and increase in the density of alveolar bone in response to increased traumatic forces. While changing the direction and its effect on occlusion force, the periodontal ligament fibers are usually arranged so that, so that the occlusion force are applied along the long axis of the tooth. While changing in direction, of the occlusion force lead to change in the orientation of periodontal ligament. And we should know that the horizontal and the rotational force are more likely to injure the periodontium. Regarding the frequency and duration, constant pressure on the bone is more injurious than the intermittent force. The more frequent the application of an intermittent force, the more injurious the force to the periodontium. So we should have a constant pressure or multiple intermittent force on the area uh, that undergoes the injury. So these are the factors that affecting uh, the occlusion force on the periodontium. Regarding the classification, we have two classifications based on the duration of the course and the nature of the course. According to the duration of the course, we have acute and chronic trauma from occlusion. Acute trauma from occlusion result from an abrupt occlusional impact, for example, biting on a hard object or for example uh, adding a restoration that interfere or alter the direction of occlusion force like for example putting a high high spot filling this may cause or induce acute trauma the results are a tooth with pain sensitivity to percussion and increase in the tooth mobility if the force is re reduced by a shift in the position of the tooth or by wearing away or correction of the restoration, the injury may heal and the symptoms may subside. Otherwise, periodontal injury may worse and develop into necrosis or may accompany by periodontal abscess formation. Or you may see it as a symptom-free chronic condition. The acute trauma have the power to produce a cemental tear. While in case of trauma from occlusion, any chronic disease or chronic conditions need time. It's the most common one and it's of greater clinical significance. Uh, it often develops from gradual change in occlusion produced by tooth wear, drifting movement, like you see it here, tooth wear and drifting an extrusion of the teeth combined with para 
power functional habits like bruxism and clenching. So this will affect the fate of the teeth. Any occlusion that produces periodontal injury is traumatic. Well, we may have a wrong idea regarding, for example, malocclusion. Malocclusion is not necessary to produce a trauma. It's not the matter of the position of the teeth. It's the matter of a high impact or a wrong direction or an intermittent a continuous or intermittent multiple intermittent or continuous uh, uh, application of forces. Periodontal injury may occur when the occlusion appears normal. The dentition may be anatomically and aesthetically acceptable but functionally injurious. So don't judge by uh, the appearance. Sometimes you find teeth are in a good occlusion and have a good aesthetic but you find there's an injury to the tissue because of a high spot filling for example or because of a wrong direction of force in a, some, in a place that that's continuously and chronically affecting the tissue and making an injury. Traumatic occlusion for relationships are referred to such term as occlusal disharmony, functional occlusal disharmony, or functional imbalance, or occlusal dystrophy. These terms refer to occlusion's effect on the periodontium, not the position of the teeth, as we said. Because trauma from occlusion refers to the tissue injury rather than occlusion. An increase in the occlusion force is not traumatic if the periodontium can accommodate it. If you have a good bone, if you have a good periodontal ligament, you have no rupture in periodontal ligaments, you have no periodontitis, you have a good cementum covering the root surface, even with the change in the forces or in the direction of the forces, you may find that the body will accommodate to it. Well, in case of defective support and you have an external force, you may find that uh, this patient having trauma from occlusion and this is one of the clinical significance of chronic trauma from occlusion because it gradually happened with time with the loss of support and even in these times maybe a less amount of force will cause a massive destruction because you have a less support periodontal support in case of primary trauma from occlusion, when trauma from occlusion is the result of alteration in occlusion forces, the alteration of occlusion forces meaning primary trauma from occlusion. Primary trauma occlusion, we can say this is primary trauma from occlusion when uh, if the trauma from occlusion is considered the primary etiology factors in periodontal destruction and if the only local alteration to which a tooth is subjected is from the occlusion. And the examples including periodontal injury produced around teeth with a previously healthy periodontium are, for example, insertion of a high filling, as you see it here, insertion of a high filling. The only cause here is trauma from occlusion is just the filling. The teeth are normal, the periodontium are normal. Second, insertion of prosthetic replacement that create excessive force on the abutment and antagonist teeth. In case of this, like this case, for example. Or thirdly, Drifting movement or extrusion of teeth into space created by and replaced missing teeth. Okay, and the fourth, fourth cause of primary trauma from occlusion is orthodontic movement of the teeth into functionally unacceptable position. Like this, like this open bite, for example. This is a failed uh, 
orthodontic treatment. While chronic trauma from occlusion results from reduced the ability of the tissue to resist the occlusion forces, also called, called secondary trauma from occlusion. When the adaptive capacity of the tissue to withstand occlusion force is impaired by bone loss resulting from marginal inflammation or from periodontitis, this will reduce the periodontal attachment area and it will alter the remaining the leverage on the remaining tissue. The periodontion become more susceptible to injury and uh, and a previously well tolerated occlusal force become traumatic. For example, when you have a normal periodontium, and as we said in previously, and you have uh, different forces exerted on the teeth, but you have a good support, you have uh, the teeth have to accommodate. But while you have a destruction in the periodontal support, even with, with uh, bearable forces previously, now it becomes injurious or traumatic. Sign and symptoms. We have clinical signs. The clinical signs of trauma from occlusion is tooth mobility, pain on chewing or percussion, frame tests, occlusal discrepancies, wear facets, tooth migration, chipped or fractured tooth, and thermal sensitivity. While well, radiographic features are increase in the periodontal ligament space and increase in the number and width of periodontal ligament, we have vertical bone loss as we see it here and radiolucency in the percussion areas and also there will be a root resorption. Stages stages of tissue response to increase occlusion force we have four stage here's the days and here's the percentage of bone surface undergoing formation or resorption of the bone for example in the normal case we have a state of balance between bone resorption and bone formation we have homeostatic phase in which there's a continuous remodeling bone resorption then bone formation well, in case of bone injury, you can see it here. For example, there is more bone, uh, uh, there is more uh, bone resorption than formation, and to reach its peak uh, in a lesser time than the repair, almost always destruction takes lesser time than repair in everything. Even in a building, for example, you build the house by six months and you can destruct that house within one day. So, in the repair phase, you have more bone formation than bone destruction. Well, in adaptation, it is just like the normal one. We have, we reach to the state of equilibrium between bone resorption and bone formation. We said that if we have a good support, even with the presence of excessive occlusal force, the periodontium will try and the, with the tooth to accommodate, to adapt to that force. And this will make it as stable as normal one. Some of the other topics that are related I'd like to share it with you is the effect of insufficient occlusal forces. We know that insufficient occlusal force may also be injurious to supporting periodontal tissue because insufficient insufficient stimulation causes thinning of the periodontal ligament, atrophy of the fibers, osteoporosis of the alveolar bone, and reduction in the bone heights. Because hypofunction can result from an open bite relationship. An absence of the functional antagonist and the unilateral chewing habits. So, these conditions should be corrected. The missing teeth should be replaced and the open bite should be corrected orthodontically. 
because any of these will cause hypofunction and hypofunction will affect the fibers of the perinuffal ligament and the, also the quality of the bone of the alveolar bone. A second uh, significance is the reversibility of the traumatic lesion. We, we know that the trauma from occlusion is reversible and after removing the injurious force uh, the symptoms should subside and the condition will repair uh, and it will return to normal. But this is when there is no persistent inflammation. The presence of inflammation in the periodontium as a result of plug accumulation may impair the reversibility of traumatic lesion because there will be a continuous destruction in the periodontium. That's how it will lead to more destruction and to affect the reversibility of the trauma from occlusion. Uh, regarding the effect of excessive occlusion force on dental pulp, there is no such a data uh, that ensure us about the, uh, the effect of excessive occlusion force on the dental pulp. But some clinicians report that the disappearance of pulpal symptom after correction of excessive occlusion force. The last topic is the influence of trauma from occlusion on progression of the marginal periodontitis. The accumulation of bacterial plaque that initiate gingivitis and result in periodontal pocket formation affects the marginal gingiva. But trauma from occlusion occurs in supporting tissue and doesn't affect the gingiva. The marginal gingiva is unaffected by trauma from occlusion because of the high blood supply which is sufficient to maintain uh, that kind of force, even when the vessels of periodontal ligaments are obliterated by, by excessive occlusion force. It's highly vascular area. While when inflammation extends from gingiva to the supporting periodontal tissue, that's, that's say when it affects the attachment apparatus and the gingivitis become periodontitis, it, uh, the, the condition will reach to a uh, a zone which a Glickman, which is a scientist, named that zone as a co-destructive zone and which make uh, the tooth and the periodontia more susceptible for destruction than previous one. So when trauma from occlusion is eliminated, a substantial reveal of a reversal of bone loss occur, except in the presence of periodontitis because the presence of inflammation will inhibit the process of regeneration. And this is important to eliminate the marginal inflammatory component in the case of trauma from occlusion, because the presence of inflammation affects the regeneration even after removal of traumatizing contacts. So in the absence of inflammation, the response of trauma from occlusion is limited to adaptation. If there is no inflammation, no periodontitis, so the tooth uh, is relieved and it should adapt to the external forces. However, in the presence of inflammation, the change in the shape of alveolar crest may be conductive to angular bone loss and existing pockets may become infrabony or intrabony pockets. So the resolution of the inflammation is the key feature in uh, minimizing the effects of external occlusion forces. And this is the end of this topic. I hope you like it and uh, thank you for your listening. Join me in my channel HL Talent.